Hi there, uh, I'm Richard Massey, and today we're going to be looking at uh, uh, how I mount my prints. I've got a big show coming up, so this is one way that I do it. A lot of folks have been asking for suggestions. They're going to put an exhibit together, and uh, I found that working with the various size pictures with frames and the glass, and it can be a logistic nightmare. So I have a big show coming up. I'm going to have uh, probably about 35 prints, small ones, and 11 by 14 size, and then a few large ones. So the solution I came up with is these wonderful little foam core boards and uh, it's laminated, some sort of plastic. It looks like a wood veneer, but there's just a few ounces. It's just really terrific. Inside here, you'll notice it has one of these little things you can just pull out. And if you want to just have your pictures standing up on a counter or something, you can do that. You can just screw these in here, one of these, and it'll... Just uh, stand up like that, or you can take this and move it out, put it here, and make it uh, horizontal. So, I'm using the boards, and one reason I really love these is they come in these, I guess it's like a styrofoam sleeve. It's a cover that cushions these, so when they're stacked together, they won't scratch. They have kind of sharp corners, so be real careful. Take them out and put them in these sleeves very carefully. As you see, I've got a cardboard box here, and this one box weighs less than two pounds. I'll have 20 of them in here, so two of these boxes completely cover my, cover my show, uh, what I'm doing now, except for those three large ones. Uh, to do what we're going to be doing here today, I use a box cutter for trimming the print. I take the blade out of it, though, because with a box cutter, you can't get in close enough, so I just use it like this. And you need a good cutting surface. And this is one of those self-sealing, um, flexible, looks like vinyl boards. Now, if you don't have one of these, you can use cardboard, but make sure you have a good hard cardboard. If you have a soft one, when you start cutting the prints, it's gonna crack the emulsion. You'll understand after we start trimming things a little bit. And normally, I have um, white glove that I use, because I don't like really get my fingers on the prints. And, but since we're uh, at the other end of the campus today, the gloves are all back in the dark room. So I just happen to have my clothes kit with me. Got a really good, soft, clean sock here, a gym sock. And that's what I'm going to use instead of my white glove. And that's about what you need. And so let's take a closer look and we can get started. Okay, we have our board that we're going to mount the print on. We have the cutting board. This is that self-healing surface I was telling you about. I took the blade out of the box cutter, and some folks find it easier to use a little, one of those uh, little rubber tips on your finger here, because we're going to be trimming this, so. But uh, I can manage it. Uh, we're at the brewery, by the way, the Brewery Arts Center in Carson City, Nevada. And it's a big campus here, and uh, we're at a different facility than our darkroom, where all my white gloves are. So we're getting really sophisticated, and I'm using one of my gym socks here because you want a nice, soft, clean cloth that we're going to push the print down against here. Normally, I'd use a white glove, but this will work fine. And we have our print that we're going to be mounting on the board. Another thing that we're going to need is a straight edge. Usually, a ruler works fine, and I'll show you how that's going to work because we're going to remove about a half inch off of this. And because, remember, when we take this wax paper off, it's a really sticky surface there. So, and once you put this print down, it's staying. So if you've got a crooked or you got bubbles, you're in a world of trouble. I've turned back just a little edge here and I don't have a ruler with me, so I'm just gonna use one of these other boards. It's got a nice sharp, firm edge on it. And I'll just hold that down and peel this back. So now, this part, you can see it's a different color, and that's where this real sticky surface is. I'm going to have to get another little edge here, peel that back a little bit, because once that prints on here, we're going to have to hold the edge down, pull this back. And you don't want to just peel this off and set a print on there, you're going to get bubbles and things. So what we'll do, we've cleaned the surface here too, really very well dusted that off. We're going to put our print on here and the print itself is about an eighth of an inch larger all around than the board. 
So you can actually put this in place and just feel. So you got a little bit on both sides, a little bit here. Doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to trim off the extra. And again, you're really careful. I'm going to set that down there. You really don't want to push it yet. A little space there. So that looks pretty smooth. So what we're going to do now, push down just on that surface there. Remember, we have just a little strip here where the sticky stuff is. Okay, now that's going to hold it. We're not, you won't be able to get that print off now. So we're going to pull this back now. This is just the wax paper. Find that little edge that we peeled up earlier. And we're going to pull this off. Now this is kind of a hard part because you don't want the print to come back on the sticky part of the board. Just want to get all of this off of here. Okay, now we want to put this, keep the paper, the print rolled, and we use the, my cloth here. We usually have a glove. And just very gently, as we roll it down, keep it bowed, and push it down. Not real hard yet. Just want to do it easy, smooth. Because if you get some part down there, you're stuck. That looks pretty good. No bubbles, smooth as can be, no crinkles. Now, all we have to do is turn it over. Remember, we have an eighth of an inch all around here. So, very important, we have that all dusted and cleaned off earlier. Turn it over now. Take our blade. And pretty easy to do. Get right against the edge there and just start trimming off the excess. Now you want to just put the blade down and get a little bit of extra on the paper up here. If you just start cutting way out here, you might be uh, tearing a little bit. So be, be careful. As long as you're pulling away from the border, it'll be fine. I'm holding that down so I get a nice hard surface here. And I've got this at a little bit of an angle. You can see now why I don't have the blade in the cutter because you, you wouldn't be able to get it close enough. They do make a special cutter that is easier, I guess, but it costs like 30 bucks. So I just do it myself like this and it works out great. I'm usually trying to lift it and set it down. Don't drag it any more than you have to. Okay. And Voila, beautiful straight edges, no crinkling, no cracking, and this is ready to hang up. So I hope uh, you learned something from this and you might want to be uh, considering this as an option for you. I try to avoid the glass and the big frames and odd sizes. As I said, 20 of these can stack up on that little cardboard box and weighs just about a pound. So logistically, it's, it's great. So again, I want to thank the folks at the Brewery Art Center for allowing me to either use this facility and uh, working with Sarah, Sarah Mori, she's one of the instructors here, and she's the, the camera person too. So thank you, Sarah, and uh, folks, tune in next time, and we'll be looking at another popular topic that uh, I hope will be of interest to you. Thank you.